we thank you and we call uh, George Vardakis. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes, yes, we can. So, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. So, George is a member of Libre Space Foundation, mainly working on uh, DSP and embed the systems. And uh, he is involved in uh, a number of projects uh, in LSF. Uh, he has involved in UPSAT, in SDR Makerspace, and now lately in Cubic, uh, implementing CCSDS and Space Data Link protocol uh, on Cubics. So, he gonna talk about this. <laughs> I suppose, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so you're straight here. <laughs> Thanks, Marcos. Uh, so, yeah, my name is George Radakis, and uh, I'm going to present to you our project, a Libre Space project uh, called Open Space Data Link Protocol, which is uh, an implementation of uh, the CCSDS telemetry and telecommand uh, data link directives. So, we're going to uh, speak a bit about how it started, uh, say a few words about the CCSDS uh, TM and TC directives, about our implementation, some uh, some things and some architectural choices that we made. Um, we're, going, we're going to speak a bit about the software that we implemented in order to operate uh, the, uh, the OSDLP uh, instance and also some next steps uh, for the future. So basically, it all started last year with the development of Cubic One and Cubic Two, uh, and uh, we basically were in need of a Mac layer protocol um, in order to have a reliable channel for our telecommands, basically. And uh, the CCSDS directives were a perfect fit, fit for that, not only because they provided all the functionality that we needed but also because we at LibreSpace uh, Foundation, we love standardization and the CCSDS in particular. But uh, the issue was uh, that at the time, and to our knowledge, uh, there wasn't um, an open source implementation available um, which uh, would um, be suitable for an embedded system, for embedded devices like our own. So we thought, uh, let's go ahead and implement it ourselves. Now, this is a picture uh, showing where uh, the data link um, protocol lies in the OSI stack. So you can see that in the data link uh, layer, we have two parts. The lower part is the synchronization and channel coding sublayer, which uh, takes care of uh, all the um, channel coding, the synchronization, uh, basically everything that's needed to transmit in a noisy channel. And in the upper layer, we have the data link protocol, um, where the, all the framing happens and the retransmissions and frame control, uh, flow control, uh, and all that. So the, the space data link protocol uh, is comprised of a number of, um, of, a number of different protocols. So the, these are depicted here in this tree view. So we have the telecommand, the telecommand space data link protocol, the telemetry, uh, the advanced orbital system space data link protocol, which that part we did not implement. And there is also a separate document, a separate um, protocol named communications operation procedure, which basically uh, describes all the functionality for the um, uh, ARQs, for the automatic repeat request, the flow control, basically the acknowledgement mechanism uh, that is applied only to the telecommand part. So let's see some more things about these protocols. The features that they provide, uh, some of the features are uh, segmentation and blocking of uh, packets. They provide a mechanism for channel sharing so how to segment uh, the one channel in more and um, basically assign a different uh, uh, channel to different applications that you may have on board. Uh, and that way provide also different quality of service uh, requirements per, per application. They describe an automatic repeat request um, and the flow control mechanism, as we said that uh, is defined in the, com the communication operation procedure one, the COP one. 
this is only applied to the telecommand part of the protocol, so you can only have uh, retransmissions um, for the telecommands, not basically for the telecommands that you send from the uh, ground station, not from the um, spacecraft side. And um, also a feedback channel is described. Uh, for that reason, they use um, a special, a specific uh, uh, data unit called the CLCW. Um, also, we have an optional security protocol that is described, and the the advanced orbital uh, orbiting systems protocol is uh, basically um, an extension of the telemetry part. Uh, it it, prov it uh, provides some uh, some extra services, and uh, the difference uh, to the rest of the protocols is that um, the the rest of the protocols are unidirectional. So in a, in a communications link, um, each, each end of the communication link must run um, a, different, uh, a different protocol. And usually what happens is that on the ground station, we, we usually run the telecommand space SDLP. And on the um, spacecraft side, we use the, the telemetry part. You cannot use both of them in both links, uh, one of them in both links, for example. But in the case of the AOS, you can use it in both ends, so it's bidirectional. That's the difference to the rest of the protocols. But as we said, we, we haven't implemented that, we didn't have the time. Another interesting feature that is uh, described is the channel sharing that uh, we said. And in, the picture, in this picture, we can see the different layers of the channels that uh, CCSDA describes. So in the lower layer, we can see the physical channel. The physical channel um, basically is the air or the absence of it in space. Um, and, and the CSDS protocols say that you can th that there may be multiple physical channels because each uh, direction in the communications link uh, is referred to as a separate channel. So the, the ground to space link is one physical channel. The space to ground is a different physical channel. Um, per CCSD uh, directives. And also you can have different physical channels if you have, for example, different uh, communication frequencies with uh, one specific spacecraft. Now on the physical channel, you can see that we can have uh, many master channels that are multiplexed. Now each master channel is assigned to, to a different spacecraft. So each spacecraft has one master channel. And there uh, we can have uh, multiple virtual channels. So multiple multiple virtual channels are multiplexed uh, onto the master channel. Now, each virtual channel, as we said, uh, can be assigned to a different application on board. Uh, for example, in uh, in Cubic, we had a different virtual channel for uh, managing different stuff on the, on the spacecraft. We have a different virtual channel for the experiment, for commanding the experiment on board, uh, and so on. And um, last, only for the telecommand part of the protocol, you can further segment the virtual channel into multiplexer access points, map channels, as they're called. Uh, if for some reason you um, want to have more um, streams of data um, from the spacecraft. And this, all this is done in order to, to facilitate uh, having different quality of service requirements per virtual channel or per um, map channel. So you can instruct, for example, one channel to uh, to conform to the um, to the ARQ. To so one virtual channel can have retransmissions, another one may not have uh, retransmissions, or you can have different priorities per uh, per, per channel. Now a few things about our documentation. Basically, what we needed was a library in C or C++, uh, which would be suitable for running on an embedded device. So it uh, preferably would have low memory utilization because uh, the resources are, are limited. So we basically wanted the user to have as much control over the memory utilization as possible. So what we decided was to go with an, a platform independent, OS independent uh, implementation of the library, 
which would um, would be capable of running on any operating system or even uh, bare metal. And furthermore, um, the, it would um, give the, um, uh, the, all the structures that are, are inside are used by the library would be provided by the user. So basically all the queues, the different queues that are holding packets into different phases of the protocol, they are provided and managed by the user. So the way we did that was, as you can see in the right of the picture, we used the weak attribute of the, of the GCC. So we defined the number of functions that we used inside our code base. And uh, then the user has to go and implement them in their own code base. Uh, so uh, most uh, of the features that are described in, uh, in, in the directives are implemented in the OSDLP library. We have the TCTM and the uh, COP in separate files. As we said, the user implements and manages the various queues. Um, of course, this requires um, more effort by the user because they have to implement some functions, but it gives greater control uh, to them, which is very important uh, in such systems. Um, and also, the user has to implement uh, the timers, uh, any timers that are needed, uh, also any locking that may be needed. And we also have some unit tests inside the code for testing a number of uh, scenarios. We also had a contribution uh, in our repository of the Space Packet Protocol, which is a network layer protocol uh, and is um, suitable also for onboard communication links apart from the usual ground to space, space to ground and space to space. And uh, we also implemented, um, because we wanted to control uh, our satellite and uh, the OSDLP instance running on there, we implemented a very simple CLI program in C++ called OSDLP operator, through which we can um, initialize the protocol, we can um, uh, transmit the telecommands and receive the telemetry and decode them. It uses UDP packets to communicate with the RF frontend, and it's very easy, easily configurable um, through just one file uh, using the libconfig library. Now, some next steps are uh, refactoring and uh, improving the usability of the code because it was developed in a very short time frame, so there is much room for improvement over there. Uh, of course, we need to work on the documentation part because now we only have some comments, Doxygen style in the header files. More testing is, of course, um, always a good thing. And also implementing the AOS features or the Space Data Link Security Protocol uh, would be also very nice. Uh, here I have some uh, references to all the various documents that um, I mentioned in the presentation. And uh, at the end also we have the repositories holding the OSDLP and the OSDLP operator. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thanks. Manthos, I can hear you. Yeah, I was muted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, George. So I think uh, there are some people typing, but I have uh, a question and is uh, how do you think a small satellite and a uh, small uh, satellite mission uh, can um, uh, take advantage of this and why should use it? Do you have any? Uh, well, it, I think it all comes down to, to you know, the, the benefits of standardization. So, if you have uh, a CCSDS protocol uh, on board, then we have seen, I think, how easy it is, for example, uh, for a network like Satnox uh, to very quickly and easily uh, convey all the information, uh, uh, you know, to to the operators of the satellite or even the community. I mean, you can just write a, um, a decoder that you have on the Satnox network, for, for example, and everything gets uh, decoded uh, instantly without having to go through a, um, a lengthy communication phase with the, the team uh, that's running the satellite and to coordinate uh, about 
with the structure of the the frames and all that. So everything is is ready uh, over there. And um, there are also other aspects like, for example, uh, you can use some of the some open source uh, frameworks that there are available for operating uh, satellites like uh, the OpenMCT or YAMUX, and basically you can you can use them uh, out of the box with uh, a satellite that's using uh, CCDS. So yeah, there are many aspects. I have okay, a there's a new a new question. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah. That uh, are you considering the to add the unified space data link protocol USDLP, which is basically uh, a, a generic version that can be used for the TC and the TM frames. Okay. Um, we haven't uh, thought about that, but um, I, I, we are we are open to suggestions as to what basically is uh, useful for the community. Uh, to add. So, yeah, sure, full on. But uh, th the thing right now is that uh, we we are kind of um, limited in um, people that uh, can work on that. So any contribution uh, from the community would be greatly appreciated. Milenko has already raised his hand for contributions. Okay. <laughs> he, he is there, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the for the space packet protocol. <laughs> <laughs> so Vito uh, asks, uh, on which platform have you tested it um, from the onboard perspective? So on the it was on the on the cubic uh, on the cubic mission, it was tested. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want any more details about the platform itself. Uh, yes, if you want to go a bit about the hardware. Yeah. yeah, if you want some info on the hardware, Matos can answer it, I suppose. Okay. Well, if you like, you can go one and tell that. Ah, like the uh, processor and, yeah. The processor, I think, uh, it was an STM32. I don't remember the exact model. L4, I think. Uh, I don't remember the exact model. Uh, yes, Ilya says yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also one said, uh, and what about the front end? What did he say? Uh, sorry. And what about uh, what about the front end of the of the the front end? Uh, uh, yeah. Which was it? Was the AX? Uh, Can't remember, but maybe one also really yes. 50, yeah. 50, 43, 50, 43. And, yeah, and how this con, uh, can be used uh, for multiple satellites? How do you this is scalable in order to? Um, so the the document the documents do describe um, you know the how to use multiple satellites. Basically, it it, it all happens through the the addressing and the different channels that uh, I mentioned also in the presentation. Um, at at the beginning. It was not supported by the OSDLP because, as I said, we developed it in a very short time frame, so we were only focused on the cubic. Uh, so we we didn't integrate uh, support for multiple, uh, easy support at least for, for multiple satellites. But uh, lately, uh, we have been working on um, uh, integrating this functionality to the library. And in the OSDLP right now, uh, you can you can use it for multiple satellites. Uh, the only the the operator, only the OSDLP operator, does not implement it yet, but it is also uh, planned to support in the future. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.